Hello folks, how's it going? Welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 999 and well the next chapter literally is 1000 so the countdown is just about up. It's coming out in the next issue which we, it doesn't, after the end of this chapter it doesn't say there's a break. I'm assuming there is considering next week is around the Christmas holidays so we'll have to wait and see. Chapter 999 was informative and we learned a lot about Ace and Yamato's connection and what how it Correlates into what's happening right now. There's a lot of foreshadowing, there's a lot of parallels. I think we jumped the gun a little bit in assuming that Kaido fought Ace. That turns out that didn't happen. In fact, the two didn't even meet each other, which is kind of a shame because I was kind of hoping they'd have it some time to the fight with Luffy and Kaido. But we get to we do get to learn a lot more about Ace and Yamato though, which is pretty cool. One Piece on the cover weekly show jump shocker I know, but we got. A bunch of characters, Ace, Luffy, Don Krieg for some reason, Boa Hancock, Chopper, Bellamy, Toshigi, Moria. In the next chapter 1000, we're going to get the biggest colour spread in One Piece history. So, can't wait to see what that looks like. But we start the chapter off with Ace in a, and Yamato in a flashback. And it, I guess it was right. It trans The end of the last chapter transitioned into the flashback. So it starts off with Ace and Yamato actually colliding because I guess Ace already came to kill Kai for Kaido's head because of what happened. Because of all, all the slays going on here. He, so he's causing destruction around the flower capital. So I guess Ace's crew is tending to the rest of the kids. So Ace goes on ahead and beats all the Yamato. They fight, they clash. And I find it interesting that Yamato is on Ace's level, which is pretty impressive. Ace charges in, uses fire fist to attack Yamato. She blocks it with the, the maze, which is cool. I don't know if she's using Naomi Haki. I don't think... It's a, it was a good thing that Haki... It doesn't look like Haki was used in this battle, which is a good thing because we never knew that Ace had it. We know he had Conqueror's Haki. We, but once they clashed, Yamato's like, yo, father set out on a mission. So I'm curious because he did set out. He actually had a confrontation with Shanks before the war. But the, so the, And keep in mind, this... Flashback took place four years ago. The Marine Ford happened two years ago. So if you count that, two years are apart from when Ace gets executed. And like, on top of that, it doesn't like Ace as a part of the White Bay Pirates yet. And Ace gets the lowdown that Yamato's Kaido's daughter, although she's like defending the island. So, by the way, with, I guess King and Queen are also with Kaido because they don't, they don't appear. And I guess she's opposed to the, the destruction and everything. But then Ace likes, I guess Ace has the same thing that Luffy, he's aware of other people's feelings because he was calling out Yamato for like, Ace actually compliments Yamato's strength. Like, I, I refuse to believe that someone as strong as you isn't even a captain. So that's something. And Ace, again, compliments the, I guess, the shackles on her, on her hands, on Yamato's hands. He also, he also mentions heart's been bound as well. So I guess that's what triggers Yamato to like, be, befriend Ace because they actually, they attack each other, and you actually see Bama Yuki, and I think they attack the actual statue dragon that we saw in the previous chapter. So we didn't know that Yamato also just tried to destroy it either. We just found out that Ace did it. But Yamato attacked it first, and then Ace just pretty much melted that shit. And those subordinates say, you mustn't do that because it's a symbol of Kaido's strength. And then we get the clarification of what Yamato wants. I too want to go out and see... I want to go out at sea and adventures just like Odin. I want to live freely. And there's the clarification. And then they both proceed. Well, Ace pretty much demolishes the statue of the dragon. That, and then that's how they become friends. They become friends. Don't know if there's any romance there. I guess people are going to ship them. But Ace proceeds to pull out Sake. And then Yamato wants to know what it's like outside of Wano, much like Odin did. I guess Ace is like, he's. He's bragging about himself because it's like, none can compare to me, but I've heard there are some dangerous guys wrecking havoc in each of the blues, like Kid in the South Blue, Law in the North Blue. So it's like, how many times are you going to tell me that already, Ace? And Ace is like, I'm going to tell you as many times as, as I need to, so stop complaining and listen. So I guess Ace is the reason Yamato knows about Luffy. And this is where we go back into the present. As, and strong as Ace was, I think this chapter confirmed that Ace is nowhere near Kaido's level. I guess he never met Ace, so that was kind of, that's again, it's kind of a shame that didn't happen. 
So I guess Ace left before Kaida returned. I guess this is where Momonosuke learns about Ace and who he, he was. This is the clarification that, oh, Momonosuke learns is a pirate that tried to save Wano besides Luffy. So, so there's a parallel. So Ace tried to save Wano and now Luffy's trying to save Wano. It, the parallels don't stop there though, folks. Shinobu was up and she did hear what Yamato said. I'm glad this got addressed as well. And Mom was also like, oh, father? And Yamato's like, yeah, Kaido's my father. Sorry, I'd have for, I didn't tell you. So that was, that was a clarification that they didn't know until that point, which makes it even more of a... I guess it's going to be a moment that goes over a lot of people's heads, but the fact that Momonosuke didn't kick up a storm or Shinobu, they didn't, like, put down Yamato for it. I'm glad that it wasn't the case. That kind of needed to get resolved. Yamato needed to mention that so things can move on. So Because if Yamato is going to become a retainer, a ally, even an Akuma of the Straw Hats, this needed to happen. So I'm glad this got addressed. I'm, I guess Shinobu said, I understand what express our gratitude for tr you treating our wounds. So I thought Shinobu was going to be the one to kick up a storm because she put, point the finger at Law back in 1-0 Act 2 when Beppo and the others got caught. So I thought she was going to say something about Yamato being related to Kaido. She didn't do that. So, And I guess she says, like, why are you telling us this now? I guess we, and it's because we need to learn about this because we need to know about Ace before Luffy ends up like, fighting Kaido. And now, and now it makes perfect sense for why Yamato and Tama are both on Onigashima. They're both here to witness it. I said this before and I'll say it again. Like, the only one that's missing right now is Hiyori, because Hiyori needed to see the downfall of Orochi and Kaido. So, I, I still think she's going to play a role. But the fact that Yamato and Tama are both linked to Ace, and they're both in Onigashima, so it makes total sense now. Nami and Tama are having a moment about a conversation about how Luffy revealed about Ace dying to Tama. It was very insensitive, even though it was, it was addressed here. But Nami, kind of, oh, that was just as painful for Luffy as well. And she get, gives out the reason why. Then we go over to the, the dome, to where the action is taking place. And and finally, what the fanfic got Drew, Marco says to Brooke and Robin, go on ahead, run up the castle to say to Zoro, you ready? So Zoro hops on, Marco goes into Phoenix mode, and they take a ride, they fly up. So that's pretty cool. While this is going on, though, and I thought this was pretty cool, it transitions back into the past with Ace, with Marco. So I thought that was so cool. And we got the fanfic come true. Zoro and Marco, they're going up. They got up to the top of the skull, I'm, I'm sure. Although, if you look at the context of what's happening now, Queen and King are about to make a move. So now things are starting to fall into place. We go back into the past and we go to Whitebeard. And I'm guessing this is where Ace is already... A, Second Division Commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. I think it's cool we got this type of information. I think we knew this, but it's always good to have clarification that why, why the Second Division Commander of the Whitebeard Pirates had been retired for so long is because nobody stronger than Odin appeared. So I, I think that's pretty cool that Ace is the one that filled that void. There are some parallels with Luffy and Odin. I guess there's some parallels between Ace and Odin. Ace proceeds to ask Whitebeard. He wants to go back to Wano because to fulfill the promise, and so he can take down Kaido. And I'm assuming at this point, Ace is a lot stronger than he was when he previously was on Wano, but we do get some information about why the White Bear Pirates did not show up on Wano when Odin fought Kaido. And it's because we only find out about Odin's death several years after the incident, which makes sense, because if they'd known, they would have gone. Wako proceeds to say, Oh, we thought about marching into Wano in the Wano country countless times. However, had they done that, a lot, it would have caused a lot of casualties in Wano. So they tried to avoid that at all costs. So it makes sense. It is kind of a handicap, like Whitebeard showing up to stop Kaido from killing Odin with the execution. Yeah, that would have been plot device. So in order to prevent that, you have the restrictions of the people of Wano being being involved as well. Mask a little damage if Whitebeard ever went to fight Kaido in Wano. And then Whitebeard proceeds to warn Ace about Kaido. Like, so a band that Kazuki Odin couldn't take down, you think you could beat him, don't be so full of yourself. Now, interesting because 
White Bear proceeds to warn Ace about Kaido. He even tried to stop Ace from trying to track down Teach. I think instead it was Shanks that tried to tell Whitebeard, hey, tell Ace to back off, because Blackbeard is no joke. Speaking of which, we see Z-A-H-A-H-A. -ah -ah -ah. We see Teach in the background, he's like, Odin was strong, take a big shot down. Marco actually says no, Ace isn't doing this just to acquire fame. He wants to get strong because he wants to fulfill his promise to Yamato and Tama. That just goes to show you how, like, again, the parallels, you have Izo and Marco saying, Next camp you go, make sure you take us along. So it's another reason why Izo and Marco are there. Parallels, they're going to help out Luffy, or at least try to. I don't know what Izo's status is, but we know what Marco's doing right now. And it tries to right back into Marco, taking Zoro on air. Marco, so that's pretty cool. It says something very interesting. It's like, if, if you guys come along, I think we can actually beat Kaido. Like all just the pirates, and I think Whitebeard is the one that says, really, just how naive are you? We get Tama's reaction, and we got Momonosuke's reaction to the fact that Ace is not only Luffy's brother, but also the son of Raja. So Tama's reaction is priceless. Like she, I was too harsh on Luffy, and I love how Nami gets Luffy's characters better than most. She's like, it's all right if you, if it really bothered him, he would have said something to you, back to you. There's a plan that Tama laid out, so we don't get to hear what that is. We, it just cuts to Mama Nice Case reaction. He was the son of Raja, he was also Luffy's big brother, and then Yamato's like, You were the ones that brought Luffy to Wano. So there you go, there's a the parallels. And she proceeds to say, I can't think of, of this anything else but fate. I mean, he even has his name, the initials of the D. So, and then you have the notebook. So, Odin's notebook. So I thought that was so cool. That plays a role. Looks to the top of the school though, and I guess Big Mom is charged because she has Prometheus and Zeus out, so she's back in full force. So she didn't challenge Kaido yet, although the so the teasing the seas for the sentient and a split. So this is where we get a, a, a pretty interesting comment from Big Mom. So Kaido, I don't care how many of you you kill, but make sure to leave Nico Robin alive. This obviously ties into the Raponic Lift, and she's not waiting for Pudding to like awaken a third eye, which is a huge mistake because I still think the fact that Pudding could very well be a potential for reading the Poneglyphs, I think someone like Blackbeard would benefit from having her in the crew, or at least kidnapping her. And speaking of kidnapping, there's been a lot of foreshadowing that Robin would be kidnapped, so the reason she wants Robin alive is because she could, is the only one that could read the Poneglyphs. And just to talk, talk about a moment and add to the what we saw with Ace and Yamato in this flashback, the fact we saw Izo and Marco and they're both on Wano right now, the parallels are there. We all, I find it very, very ironic that we also saw Teach, who was mentioned in that flashback. He also mentioned Wano. He also mentioned about how strong Kazuki Odu was. I don't think that's just to be a just another coincidence. This increases the odds of. Blackbeard showed up on Wano because he also has ties to Ace. So, he, but I just thought about it, and here's another scenario which could tie into the final fight with the Blackbeard pirates and the Straw Hats. So, one of the plot elements that I did mention about is how at the end of Hawkeye Island, it didn't seem to me like to be an ending for Sanji and Pudding. Like it felt like a farewell, but there's also some foreshadowing as to a, re a reunion between the two because. Sanji addressed Pudding by name, so he didn't forget about her, so it wasn't his memories was erased. I said this many times in the after the review in the anime. I mentioned this for a reason, because Final Farewell, I still think there's a chance that Vincemos could show up again. We'll have to wait and see. But, point is, this could be an opportunity to showcase, because you don't highlight the fact that Pudding has a an ability to read the Podoglas if it's not going to have an impact on the story. There's no reason for it. So it could be a possibility of where Blackbeard was, and I can see, totally see him doing this, and I've mentioned this before. First off, Big Mom has a raw poneglyph. So like, steal that, because if he can read the poneglyph or find somebody who can, that it benefits him too. Also, kid, at the same time, kidnap Pudding. And can you imagine if Blackbeard does end up showing up on Wano and not only reveals the fact that, hey, I'm here to take you down, Kaido, not only 
if Kaido does fall in this arc and to take his devil fruit and have a third and final devil fruit, but also reveal the fact, hey, I also went to Hoki Island, Big Mom, and I, guess what I found? Teach kidnapping Pudding, and can you imagine the impact that would have on Sanji? Because if Sanji hasn't forgotten about Pudding and he sees this, knowing how he feels about women, that could motivate Sanji in the final fight. I'm just throwing it out there, it could amount to nothing, but I do find it interesting that Teach was also shown in this flashback alongside with Izo and Marco and Whitebeard. So we actually got one of the most adorable moments from Big Mom yet. She said, don't belittle me now. I still think of you as a little brother in Kaido. So there's a lot of connect there's a lot of history between Kaido and Big Mom. And to be honest, I th honestly thought we were going to go to a Rock's flashback, a, a God Valley flashback, which I would totally be on board for. So Kaido threatens to drop the the island. So he's going to drop the island. There's going to be no accident. Like Kaido is literally attempting to drop this on, only, on the Flower Capital. So Kaido has to be defeated before that happens. So there's a time limit now. Very similar to how there was a birdcage in Dress Rosa with Doflamingo and Luffy. So there you go. But we get one of the most important parts of the chapter where we have the on the day of the God Valley instant when the rocks fell to ruin. I was the one that Big Mom apparently is the one that gave Kaido the mythical type fish fish brew. So that's the devil fruit of Kaido. Before the chapter ends, Big Mom does also ask Kaido about the Royal Poneglyph. I, I knew it. I knew it from the jump that that's what Big Mom was after, the Royal Poneglyph. Kaido doesn't answer. Instead, he gives the response like, is it too soon for you to show your true colors? So he's, a, he's fully aware about what's going on here. A couple of things, the fact that there's an attention now, it probably means something's going to happen within the final fight. Because there has to be a reason why the big mom is there. The, also, the other thing is, I think it's dead set now, because of with Ace and the, and what Yamato stated to Ace, and, that she wants to she wants to leave Wano, she, she wants to set out on the world and see the world, much like Odin did. I think there's too many parallels for it not to happen. So Yamato goes with the straw hats because there's so many parallels with Luffy and Ace. I think it makes sense. But like I said, I think we ought to jump the gun a little bit and assuming that Kaido fought Ace. At least I did. So that didn't happen. But we did get the connection with Yamato and Ace, which is just as good because it ties into what's going on right now. Setting the stage for perhaps one of the biggest, if not the biggest chapter in One Piece history, 1,000 on the horizon. I thought it was a great chapter with a lot of information. The reveal of Kaido's Devil Fruit and the fact that Big Mom was the one that gave Kaido that Devil Fruit. I think it should have been obvious, but I guess we... Sometimes it's almost... It's the simplest things that turn out to be the most shocking. So, let's have to wait and see. Maybe we'll, 1000 will kickstart the Kaido flashback. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That's going to do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like the review if you did. Hit that thumbs up. I appreciate that. Helps out the channel with these reviews. Scratch half more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.